How's it going? Uh, welcome to Order 42. I am Rob, and today, oof, we got uh, we got some stuff to go through. Um, it's gonna be interesting. Uh, there's um, there's a lot of stuff to go through here. Uh, I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to get through it all. Hopefully, it will, but we'll see. We'll see. And uh, so yeah, Octavius is here. And it says, good morning, Bucho. <laughs> what's up, Octavius? Uh, what's what's up? Uh, it's good to see you. Um, so yeah, I had the idea late Friday night. I was like, you know what? I don't I don't have anybody to to be on the show. I didn't want to bug anybody because everybody's been so busy lately. And I just thought, you know what? I've been meaning to go through my closet. So I was going through my closet. And I started thinking, you know what? Instead of going through this by myself, I could go through it with with you guys. And you guys could tell me, hey, this, you should trash that, or you should sell that, or you should whatever. But some of it, you know, I I have to be honest. I I know that there's probably going to be a few people that are going to be like, oh, I want that, you know? Some of it, I just, I can't see myself selling a whole lot of stuff. Um, But you never know. There's there's just a lot there's just a lot here, um, and some of it is just like uh, the stuff that I grabbed uh, up on top of. Uh, well, here I can show you. I got my uh, little handy dandy uh, Logitech. Um, so yeah, you can see um, see all these boxes here. That's my hand, I think. Is that what is that? Oh, it's my elbow. Elbow cam. Uh. But yeah, you can see uh, you can see all this stuff, and if if you look, uh, yeah, Star Wars toys, Star Wars stuff, Star Wars stuff. What does that say? Old miscellaneous toys on an in an old blockbuster popcorn box. Miscellaneous, and I think that says Star Wars toys. Miscellaneous game systems. So yeah, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a lot. Uh. What's up, Bucho? Buenos dias, chat. Guten Tag, Nightbot. I wanna. I need to have. I need to set up something where Nightbot can say hello. Um. I don't even know if that's a thing, but I think it'd be cool. An unboxing show. Yeah. It's it's gonna be weird. I don't know. I don't, I don't know how how this is gonna go over. I hope it's I hope it's fun for you guys. Um. Because I mean, I'm I'm sure I'm gonna go into some stories and stuff about about stuff, but but yeah, hey, you know what? While we're here, let me show you my my. Uh, you can actually see my setup here. This is what I this is what I roll with. So yeah, so there's my there's the chat, all that stuff on that monitor with a computer down there. Um. And then I've got, you know, that my that's, that's my PC down there. And then I've got my iMac here, which is very bright. And I'm on eBay. And, uh, yeah, so I've got that. And I've got this set up here. And then I've got my stream deck and uh, my controllers. And what's kind of cool is this guy is a USB switch box type thing. So when I'm ready to stream, I can just go tunk, 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 and turn them on. So that way it's not like... It's not like, uh, you know, drawing power when I'm not using it, you know? Because, I mean, all my stuff, my my uh, USB, um, well, I guess my audio interface, and then all my uh, capture cards, I don't want those just sitting there on all the time. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, got a, got a pretty good setup now. So, really, I can focus on content instead of what's wrong. <laughs> Because I think that's that's the biggest the biggest issue lately is uh, I've just been uh th- there's just been so many issues where I'm like okay I don't like the look of that oh I don't like the sound of that so hopefully it's good living on the edge what what did oh because some of my stuff is on the edge there yeah oh and I yeah my little vape stuff and actually I guess I could. You can see the top of my shelf there, my Star Wars stuff. I got my Darth Vader, my Lego 
some of my Lego stuff, my Skywalker saga. There's a clone trooper up there, way in the back up there. And then there's a, that's a, one of the masterpiece transformers. There's my, my Zelda and my THX Star Wars. And, uh, yeah. And books and such. That's the top of my head. But yeah. Y'all are probably like, you're making me dizzy. But hey, the Eagle and Vicky have landed. Hey. Oh, my drink. Yeah, but it's it's pretty sturdy here, man. It's, uh, I've got a nice little, th th this desk is so, ugh. I'm so excited that I got this desk. It makes things so much easier because it's so, I mean, yeah, I can shake it a little bit. You can see my mic shaking, but for the most part, man, this thing is so sturdy. And I never, you know what? You're probably right, though. I'm going to move that just a little bit. Move, move it a little in, because you never know. Especially when uh, I'm going to be over here getting stuff. So are you, I think let's just get into it, because, yeah. It's probably a good idea. So let's do the, um, let's see, let me move this. Let me get through this stuff first. This was stuff with, that was just kind of sitting on top. Um, and this was actually, I, I just kind of looked in here to see what was in here. And I was like, oh man, that's cool. Um, so, a few years ago, Nine Inch Nails did some special edition album stuff. And they did it where this, they, they, put, they gave you this thing. And if you look... This is for uh, not the actual events, which is the one of the albums that came out a few years ago. But in this packet, you see the, the black marks? That's on the inside. It looks like toner, but I never opened it. And if you look online, not the actual events, physical component, you can see that as you handle it, it, it makes a mess. But as you handle it, it's completely unique to you. So... All the pictures that you see online, everything's smudged a little differently, or the 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 whatever that powder is has, and it kind of makes art, and it's kind of cool. But I was like, I don't want to make a mess, so I'm just gonna keep it sealed, and it's just kind of cool. Um, then for uh, Add Violence, which was one of their little albums, they did a special edition type set. And it's it's just a cool little, it's like a fake, it's like a fake guide on, you know, this audio equipment that has, you know, where you can turn up the violence and stuff like that. It's kind of neat. Uh, but uh, let's see, what is there anything in here that's cool? Oh, there's stuff falling out. So like if you had like, like on my uh, audio interface, I could stuff like, like this. Amplify chaos <laughs> and deviance. There's all these, and every every one is just random. And there's uh oh, there's uh some of the oh <laughs> disorder. I don't know. And then there's add violence stickers and all kinds of stuff. It's it's just kind of a thing. He does. He always does something. Trent always does like special, uh, kind of themed stuff, which is kind of neat. Uh, and then, uh, and then you get pins and all the pins are, um, random, antiquated, insignificant, irrelevance, and obsolete was in there. But then I came across in here, I guess I stuffed all these in here, ticket stubs. So I have a bunch of ticket stubs. These are all for, uh, for Force Awakens. And then I've got... Uh, when we went and saw Alton Brown, he did like, like a tour thing. Was Nine Inch Nails are your favorite lengths of nails? Of course. I mean, the 10 inch nails are just, it's just overkill. And you know, the seven and a half, they're just, it's just, it's not worth it. But this is, uh, when Alton Brown came to town, this was on October, 2014. So this is after I got sick. 
I still don't know how I made it through that because I was still, I wasn't hooked to stuff back then. But anyway, this was really kind of cool to see. July 2009, Tool at the Nokia Theater in Grand Prairie. And if you see, oh, over here, I'm in the pit. Pit tickets to see Tool. Oh my God, that was an amazing show. It was so much fun. And then uh, this was August 2008, the Nine Inch Nails Lights in the Sky Tour, which is kind of cool, at American Airlines. Um, tickets were $54.50. So anyway, as I ran across that stuff, I was like, man, that's cool. I can't believe I kept this stuff. So I'm just going to keep that all in the package. If I can, oh gosh, I'm already going to make, I'm going to make a terrible mess today. I know it's going to be, it's going to be insane. And that doesn't fit. Crap. Um, hold on. Hold on. Okay, get in there. Okay. So that's the Nine Inch Nail stuff. Oh, and I have another one of those for some reason. Unopened. Uh, back when the Blu-rays came out for Star Wars, uh, Target did a li limited edition lithographs. I still have that in the package. I haven't opened it. I just thought, man, those are cool, and I don't really need them. So I just saved them. Um, okay, so back in... God, what was it? It had to have been... had to have been like 2011, 2012... I was working at Blockbuster part-time, and uh, Tool Nine Inch Nails, are you sure you're not a frustrated carpenter? <laughs> Mayoral Digital, what's going on, sir? Uh, yeah, yeah, I was just going through some of my stuff here, and then uh, we'll get into the toys and stuff in a minute, but yeah, uh, yeah, some Nine Inch Nails and Tool stuff. You also enjoy a 40 millimeter galv jolt. I don't even know what that is. Galvanized jolt, I guess. Not a frustrated carpenter. <laughs> How do I feel about the Saw franchise? Not a fan. Not a fan. But anyway, so back in 2008, or I'm sorry, 2011, I think, I was working at, uh, I was working at Blockbuster, and a friend of mine that worked there, you know, I, I you know, you make friends. I'm. This is not uh, Billy and Jerry. Uh, Jerry, Billy and Jay. Jerry is, uh, yeah. The other show that I used to do, but this was this guy's name was Max, and he was actually on my old podcast for one episode, I think. But he went to San Diego Comic Con, and hey, I know he's recently been into some trouble, but uh, it's uh, Ray Park's autograph, um, and he gave it to me, and he's like, he's like, yeah, I got that for you because I know you're a big Star Wars fan, and I'm like, dude. Thank you. How much do you want for it or whatever? And he's like, dude, I just got it for you. Like, okay. And then this, I don't know. I don't honestly don't know who gave this to me. But it is nice. It's a, it's a first day of issue, May 25th, 2007 in Los Angeles. I'm, I'm, I assume it's the, let's see, 2007 would be 30 years for Star Wars. 30 year anniversary. It's like a... It's like a lithograph type thing, and you got the C-3PO stamp there. I was like, cool, I don't even know where this came from. Like, I don't know who gave it to me. Um, but, uh, yeah, I have it. So, uh, let's see. Okay, let's do that one in a second. How about some games? And these were just loose in a... I have a box of CDs over here, and I just had a ton of these, like Xbox and PlayStation. Well, let's just... Ah. Okay. So first off, Metal Gear. Um, and all of mine are... Um, oh, okay. So this is a habit I got into back when I worked at Blockbuster the first time. So 97. Every time I would buy something, I would put the, just for, just for ease, 
I would open up the case and, you know, usually there's like a little place for like, uh, well, DVDs and stuff. There's like a little pamphlet or whatever. I would stick my receipt in there so I knew when I bought it. So I have my receipt for Metal Gear. It was forty four ninety nine, and I bought it on, where's the date? Wow. How many, how many times have you seen a receipt from 1999? But yeah, apparently I bought a Pepsi. So there you go. It's pretty, pretty cool. Um, so yeah, Metal Gear Solid with, uh, with all the stuff. In fact, I don't think there is a manual in here, is there? It's just a two disc, a two disker. But yeah. Yeah, all complete. I mean, it's dusty as hell, but in fact, I'm going to have to clean my desk. Anymore. Um, let's see. Ace Combat 3 Electrosphere. I don't even remember this game, but I'm into flying games. I've always liked flying games. So, yeah. Ray Park was Steve Irwin's least favorite park. Maybe. It may be too soon. It may be too soon. Looks like you were very organized the way you keep your receipts. It, it just became a habit. And it was like, it was easier than me, you know, just having receipts everywhere. And it was also easy. I just remember at Blockbuster, it was easy on the way out. You're taking stuff all the time. You know, you're always buying stuff or renting stuff. And we always kept our receipts on the inside. So when we left, we could show the receipt. And that way... If it was me or anyone else that was there, we could check ourselves and just make sure that we're not stealing anything. It was just something I got in the habit of doing. But but yeah, if you look, man, uh, my stuff is pristine, man. Look at look at the manual looks amazing. Uh, everything is. I've just ever since I was a little kid, I've been anal about that stuff, and it's like <clears throat> I've like my books. Most of my books, you can barely tell I've read them because I don't like if it's a paperback, I just barely open it. And I, I think it's because I've always loved fresh looking stuff. So I've always kept good, good, good care of my stuff. And this one, uh, I don't know what happened. I guess I just bought the like a used copy, but this is Metal Gear VR Missions. And all I have is the disc and like it's like they tore the you know the previously viewed stuff you know you could take the uh the i mean people would just they were just rough with stuff and like the cover it looks like it was completely gone so all i got was the disc and the the inside of the manual without the cover but uh you could see on there um if billy and jay were here they could see 48034 that was the store code, the Blockbuster store code for our store, 48034 in Grand Prairie. Um, that's where we worked. Right off 303. And then, like, some of these I know aren't mine. I think my wife bought some when we had our PlayStation. Um, let me see if I can... The stuff is in pretty good condition, but like this one, uh, the CD case is broken. But it's uh, Midway Arcade's Greatest Hits. It's probably not even worth anything. Um, but yeah, yeah, there's that. And then, uh, now this one, I actually looked up earlier. And I was actually kind of blown away by, hashtag blown away, by uh, how much it's going for. Um... David Rivas, what's going on, sir? Haven't seen you in a while. Give you, give you your books back in the name of the law. You have the Gypsy King CD. No. Grand Prairie 48034. It was a spinoff of Beverly Hills 90210. <laughs> give, me, give me your tape. Or give me, you give, what, what tape? This tape? I have some electrical tape here. Is that what you mean? But good to see you. Good to see you. Yeah, this is gonna be fun. I think I think this is gonna be fun because especially when we get into the toys and stuff and the and the old systems, it's gonna be cool. So this next one, PlayStation. Apparently, this is rare. Street Fighter Collection, um, two disc guy. 
and again, pristine. I mean, it looks like it's, I mean, look at that. <laughs> look at that manual, how, how crisp. Let's see, Let's see, there we go. It looks like it's barely been even opened. Um, and the reason that I got that, this was a, a special order, I remember. Um, it was hard to get when it was new. Um, so yeah, um, apparently that's a rare version of it. Um, because there's a collection too, but, uh, yeah, I have that. I think it's pretty neat, pretty neato. Um, so, sorry, just want to move the stuff here. Now, uh, some of these, I, I know some of these I kept just because I never got rid of them. It wasn't like I had a super, uh, what do you call it? Like a, like a sentimental thing for it. But this game, I loved Descent in the old PlayStation cases where this is cardboard. And I mean, again, everything is as pristine as possible. Um, the original PlayStation came in these cases. And so, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. And even the, let's see, VR Golf 96. I wonder if there's a wait. I wonder if there's a receipt in here, because that's I think that's what's going to be fun about some of this stuff. If there's receipts in it. Oh no, no, no receipt in that one. But pretty cool. And yeah, they're they're huge. They're bigger than DVD cases. They're they're huge. Because look, here's uh, here's Battlefront Two on Xbox. So on a shelf, it made it look funky. Um, but yeah. And then this one is in rough shape. And I think it's because, uh, do I have the ET toy? Your case is way bigger. Well, David, you're just the man. So that's the way it goes sometimes. Air combat. And this one's in rough shape. This one, the... I say it's in rough shape. Actually, it's not bad. It's just, it, I think it's just dusty. But yeah, same thing. Um, air combat was awesome. In fact, I thought I had air combat or ace combat too. Cause this is, that was ace combat three I had. I don't know what happened to two, but those two big, big, big boys. And of course, battlefront two. Um, with a manual. Um, I love this game so much. It was so good. <laughs> Anybody want an Xbox Live two month free trial? <laughs> the code's still there. I don't think you can use that anymore. A free two month trial subscription code. Oh, I'm sorry. It it it's not valid. It hadn't been valid since June 30th of 2006. <laughs> oh, what we got here? F-19 Stealth Fighter, A-10 Cuba, Afterburner. Afterburner, of course. I haven't, I don't play the other ones. Do I have a GTA San Andreas PC case, first edition? No, I don't. I do have somewhere, and it may be in these boxes. I don't know. I know I have some original uh, PC stuff. Um, but why Xbox Live is awesome? In 2006, man, gaming online was like, it just wasn't important to me, at least. So. Now, one of the things about working at Blockbuster is that, I don't remember when they started it, but it was some sort of deal with Xbox where it was almost like an ambassador program. Since you worked at a retailer, you had access to this website where you could log in and, and do surveys and, and take trainings and stuff like that. And when you did that, you got credit for games. So you could just buy games for like five bucks. And so some of these are games I bought through there. So there's no man, I mean, there's uh there's no receipts or anything, but like uh, Top Spin is one of the games that they uh, were pushing really hard. And I think this was just sent to me 
It's actually it was actually a pretty fun game back in the day. And then uh, let's see, um, limited collector's edition of Halo Two. So, uh, let's see. Yeah, everything's still looking good in there. Um, it's a pretty cool steel book. It's one of the first steel book things I'd ever seen before, and I was like, man, they really went all out. Um, let's see, what is this? Gosh, there's so much stuff in here. What is that? Conversations from the universe. Strategy. Hold on a second. Something for the Halo 2 soundtrack. Uh, a coupon for the for a Slurpee. A Halo Slurpee, apparently. Again, expires 2005, so. And, uh, hey, look, another code. Um, expires March 31st, 2005, so. Sorry. Remember when manuals were fun to look at? Yeah. To me, that's that's part of the experience. I mean, think about like those special edition movies that come out. You know, when they have like little art books and stuff like that. Man, I love looking through that stuff. The problem is typically, a lot of those special editions, I look through it once and then it just sits on a shelf and then it takes up way too much space. So it's kind of like this was another one that they pushed really hard. And I don't know if you guys ever played Crimson Skies, but it's my fa one of my favorite arcadey flying games. It was so good. It was such a good game. And I kept waiting for them to make another one. And they never did. Um, maybe that's why I was a bigger fan of PlayStation. Because they, they didn't go for it. But, yeah, I mean, again, Pristine, not that it's, it's probably, it was, it was a, it was a uh, Xbox exclusive, right? Yeah, Xbox exclusive, and then... Oh, Microsoft Game Studios. FASA Studio. I don't know. I just remember it was one of those games that... Um, I don't know. I just really liked it. In fact, it's a lot. It's it's weirdly similar character-wise to Uncharted. So, When internet was so much fun to search at, do you have a Namco museum? I just have the Midway one. I have that case of Halo 2. Remember when... Yeah. Yeah. That's... Dude, again, this stuff is just... It's just fun to look at. I don't even remember buying this game. So I'm not even sure if this is mine. Well, it's got to be mine because it's got the manual and all that. But I don't even remember buying it. On the PlayStation 2. Gran Turismo 3 A-Spec. Oh. It's, uh, it's used from GameStop. Don't remember buying it. Uh, GameCube. Rogue Squadron 2. Um, now, this one I kept as pristine as I could, but it was a previously... In fact, this is... I think this is a... Yeah, this is a Blockbuster case. A Blockbuster game uh, CD case. Because you can... You can see the Blockbuster logo there. And you can see the the locks. So what was cool is with when we rented games, you'd get this. You'd get the whole thing. And all we'd have to do to check it out is just unlock, take the little, there's a, like a, I don't have any, but there was a yellow lock that went all the way down and it you could open it with magnets. A lot of people stole them. But, so, you know, as good as possible. And you can see... The store code is on that one, and you see those, of course, those little magnetic things. I hated when they did when they did this, but that's store four eight two five three, which was Beltline and Northgate and Irving. Not that that matters, but that, I, I stayed at this store for about three years. Um, this one I must have bought. Yep, and this is an original. Everything's original and pristine. Double dash. Um, and there's my receipt. I bought it for forty dollars on July twelfth, two thousand four. That's a brand new. I mean, not brand new, but pretty pristine. 
Now this one, I don't. I opened this because I was like, I was like, I didn't even know I had this. But the weird thing is, so it's it's Metroid Prime Echoes, which is Prime Two, right? Yeah, this is Prime Two. There's no game in it. So I don't even know. I you have an unopened Mario Sunshine. Shinobi for the PS2. I remember that one. And you hated those locks, huh? Well, it was part of the deal, right? Um, and then this one. This one is really kind of special to me. Um, just because it's so freaking cool. Um, and I don't know... I don't remember how I... Did this come with a GameCube? I guess I should show you. That one? The Ocarina of Time on GameCube? Because that's a 64 game, right? Um, and then I've got all the... All the cool stuff. A preview of Wind Waker. Which is kind of neat to see. No receipt. It would have been interesting to know when I got this. But... But, uh, but, yeah, pretty cool. Double Dash is a great game to play with people. I don't like people, so it won't work for me. <laughs> okay, so those are all the CD, DVD style, these, these type things. Oh, yeah, you can see all the dust on those. Got to clean some of this stuff. Okay, so let me switch over to this. And you can see, oh, that's just, yeah. Um, so yeah, the uh, let's start with this top box here. Um, and this I opened up and uh, I was saying, whoa. And Mayoral Digital, we're not done. I know we're not. Um, yeah. Here, let me put this down. So yeah, these boxes, my dad gave me. So if my dad's, I think my dad was in chat earlier. Um, apparently I saved all these back when I was young, young, young. So we're talking about original Nintendo, what, 86, 87, 88, 89. I kept the boxes, some of the stuff. Uh. And some of them are in really good shape. And I know that uh, collectors love this kind of stuff. Um, this was something I think my wife got me. And so it was just in the box. Um, let me... Okay, I'm going to have to be careful here. <laughs> yep, this was... I think this was in the box with it. I think these are my baby shoes. There you go. Um... I've got, um, these were Action Fleet, I think, and they're just like little models of, uh, and I, I had these, like, on shelves, um, Slave 1, there's, uh, a, a TIE, the Advanced, TIE Advanced, um, let's see, an A-Wing, with little guys in them, there's like little, little tiny figures, and then a TIE Interceptor. And then here's a, oops. This is a, just like that, um, I think it was a different, I can't remember. There was a, there was a, yes, that was my baby, my baby shoe, huh? Um, oh, look, there's a, that's a die cast TIE fighter and it's all moves. I don't think it's supposed to do that. But you can see it's a Django, um, but it's all bent up. So, oh, everything's bent. Anything, it was plastic. It's all, or uh, that molded plastic or whatever. Um, so, but yeah, I looked in there and I was like, whoa. But then I didn't realize I guess I just did, this was a few years ago when he gave this stuff to me. I didn't realize I had this stuff. So I don't know where to start. 
Um, a boxed Ninja Turtles 2 nin regular Nintendo with the manual. The game's not in here. <laughs> I think the games. I'd be lucky if I had a lot of these games. But for some reason, I kept the boxes in a different spot. So there's Ninja Turtles 2. Let's see. I'm not going to go through all. I mean, like, Robo Warrior? I think my either my mom or my dad must have given this to me. Um, no manual. Just the box. Yeah, because I think... You know how it came with those... Uh, those the slips the slip cover things for the Nintendo cartridges, right? I think I used to store the manual in those. So some of these might not have manuals and stuff. I know Turtles 2 did. Oop, this feels heavy. Okay. So I've got all the paperwork, but no game. The game I think must be in one of these boxes or somewhere. But yeah, Mario Brothers 3 with manual. Um the the poster thing, you know, like the Nintendo Power stuff. What is this? Read this before buying my next game pack. Oh, Nintendo Power Magazine. So, I mean, it's not perfect, but it's a pretty good looking box for Mario 3. There you go. You can see the shiny, the shininess. And then, uh, let's see, uh, same thing for Mario 2. So I don't know what these are worth. This box may be worth more than the game. I don't know. I mean, that's possible. But the manual, everything's in here. Everything's in these. And I kept this stuff as pristine as possible at like 12 years old. 10, 12 years old. However old I was. Here's a NES cleaning kit, which I'm sure is very... Useful these days. I don't even want to open that. There's just a bunch of junk in there. Um, now, this one surprised me. I was like, whoa. Yes. Now, I know I have this game. Again, just got to find it. But that's awesome. A ninja, and it the the box is a little uh, the uh, the box is a little torn right there at the top. But other than that, this thing looks beautiful. I mean, that is just nice. So, Rob, all I'm saying is the antique roadshow. I don't know, man. That's the thing. You got to go hang some washing out, so don't do anything exciting for the next 12 minutes, or I'll get FOMO. I don't know what that is. What are you, what are you kids talking about these days? But I think Bucho's like around the same age as me. I don't know. This one was surprising. Metroid. This one is in a little rougher shape. I don't know if you can see. It's a, It's just... It's just a little, you, yeah, there you go. You can see some of the creases and stuff. But uh, still. And the manual looks like a dog chewed it. But I still have it. Which is nuts. I think it's because I used to, I loved Metroid so much that I would just read the manual when I wasn't playing. So that was, that's pretty cool. Um... And this one, geez, original Battletoads and really nice. Again, thank my dad. Thank my dad for this. Oh, fear of missing out. Well, sorry. Gotcha. I guess I'm whatever. But this box is in great shape. Manual. A warranty card. So yeah, man. 
And I know I have this game in there too. What is that? Oh, that's another Nintendo Power. I think. Yep. And it's still got the styrofoam in it. Too. Dude, I'm telling you. I was... I was already... I guess an anal kid back then. Because... There you go. You get 10%? <laughs> well, I mean, look. Here's the thing. I don't know why I would sell these unless somebody just offered me a crazy amount of money, but I don't even know if it's worth anything. Here's a, and this one I don't understand because I don't, I don't remember this game at all. Prehistoric man, but I don't remember. And this is a, what super Nintendo and that's a blockbuster thing. I don't remember. Yeah. Yeah, 1998. So that must have been Ask Billy and Jay. They must be drilling. You know, I tweeted out that I was going through this stuff. I don't know if... I have to say, though, I did send them... And this was... This had to be six years ago, seven years ago. I sent them pictures of some of this stuff. I just opened the box and went... And sent them a picture... And they said, uh, you, we need to come over like ASAP. And I'm like, I'm not selling this stuff. I just didn't know anything about, I didn't, I wasn't concerned with that. Now I'm kind of thinking, you know what? Some of this stuff would be better in their hands if, if they wanted it. But also some of it, I just can't see myself getting rid of, but I don't know. I guess it just depends on how much they like, I don't, you know how Jay is. <laughs> He'd probably be like, I'll give it all to you for $25. And I'm like, um, yeah, no, sorry. It's not $25 worth to, uh, you know, to basically sell my childhood. You know what I mean? So I guess, I guess it really just depends. 1942. And this box is a little rough. You know, it's funny. Some of these don't feel as high quality as like the Nintendo ones. Uh, no manual. Pretty easy game. But still, you want the manual. And then this one, unfortunately, is a little bent up. But, Batman. And I played the crap out of this game. And... What is this? Okay, well now I know why this is messed up. I'm not gonna read this, but that's my little brother's handwriting. Um, hidden gems, right, Mayoral Digital? I mean, yeah, for sure. Because some of this stuff, I didn't even realize. I, I didn't know I had this, like in pristine condition. But for some reason, I guess my little brother got into this box because he left little notes and things. I can't even read this. This is... 01, I think. I'm just gonna keep it in here. And one day, you know, maybe he and I will uh, open it up and be like, ah, look at this. But yeah, so that's that box. Here, let me put my baby shoe back in there and uh, an old uh, Jack back in and then uh yeah i don't know why it's in a this was on top of everything and it's in like a paper a copy paper copy paper box anyway okay Get out of the way. <sighs> okay anyway what i was trying to say about billy and jay though is i kind of feel like if anybody tries to offer me anything I kind of feel like I should give them first dibs because, you know, I told them no before. So it'd be kind of weird. It, I guess in the, what do, you, what do you call that? The, the, uh, game chasing etiquette. Do people still bronze their baby shoes? I don't know. 
but it's in a, I mean, it looks like saran wrap or whatever you want to call that from the seventies. So who knows? And then give Eagle 10%. Of course, of course, if I sell this stuff, I, like I said, it's some of it, I'd have, a, I'd have a real hard time selling. But at the same time, if I knew it was going to some place that would, to somebody that would take care of it, it might be worth it. I don't know. It, it's so, I, I know that that's probably sounds wishy-washy, but like if somebody was to take, to get that ninja, I always said Ninja Gaiden when I was a kid, because I always thought Raid. So Raid is spelled the same as G-A-I-D. I didn't know pronunciation back then. Ninja Gaiden. I always said Gaiden. Anyway, pretty cool. It'd be kind of neat, though, to see... To see my st some of my stuff that I just took basically took care of. I didn't really use uh, since back then when I was a kid. To see it in their collection in some way. I think that'd be kind of cool. But I don't know. All right. Uh, holy crap. It's already 4 seven, 447. I've been going for 50 minutes and I went through one box. And uh, we got five more boxes to go. Well, let's, let's get to the next one. Let's see what's in here. Um, okay, I know what these are. So that's all that's in the, those four things. And I'll show you what they are. Okay. Um, so these were from Blockbuster. Uh, so 99, right? Phantom Menace time period. So we're talking 1999. I think what happened is these sat on the shelf and I heard that they were going to go on clearance. And I said, you know what? I'm just going to put them all right here. And uh, if they sell, cool. If not, I'm taking them. So I bought them all for a cheap price. So they were... See, $16.99 list price or whatever. I have no idea how much I got them for because there's no receipt in here. But, oh wait. I kind of want to see if there's a receipt in here. That'd be kind of cool to see when I bought them. And it's so hard with cardboard to open it up without without damaging anything okay I can't see anything I don't know what that I don't know what that sound is but and it's dusty as hell Ugh, look, at, look at how much dust but yeah that's a, what is it, 8 inch? Padme? And it kind of, it kind of doesn't look like her, like at all. You see that? Yeah. So there's that. Then uh, we got this. Uh, Obi-Wan. And these are in kind of rough shape. Um, probably because nobody liked episode one. That much? Here, um, let me do this. There we go. And there's a... Oh, yeah, that one's really messed up right there. But Qui-Gon. And then... Maul. That's kind of cool. And... This is in there, unopened. Don't remember getting this. I just, like I said, there's sometimes I think people just gave me Star Wars stuff. You know, they're like, oh, you like Star Wars here. And I'm like, okay. And then I never open it and I just kind of put it off to the side. But yeah, man, that's pretty neat. I used to love those as a kid. Um, you know, the ones that came with tapes and some of them, the, the, I, in fact, I think I might have some somewhere where it's, uh, they're like the 45 record, you know what I mean? The smaller records. I just think it's cool. Um, 
So that is all that's in that box. Let me put this on. Are y'all enjoying this? I don't want to bore anybody. I hope you guys are enjoying it. You don't have the Laserdisc versions of Star Wars. No, I don't, but I do have the VCD version of, uh, oh, Leon. Leon, were you, were you here earlier with the, with the Nintendo, the original Nintendo boxes? Did you see that? Um, you have the CED version. <laughs> are you, are you being serious or are you joshing? Because I get, I, sometimes I get the feeling that, that you're not being completely honest with me. Okay, Leon, hold on a second. I want to show you. Don't worry, I won't go through all of them again. Your clocks have gone forward. I thought you were on, on an hour later. Okay, sorry. I'm just going to show Leon the box. Those are all, well, most of those are original Nintendo boxes. And almost all of them are in pristine condition. Most, most of them have manuals in them. <laughs> the games are not in them. <laughs> uh, my dad had all those. Apparently, I kept them as a kid. I remember keeping them, but I don't remember taking good care of them. So I must have put them somewhere safe. And then he gave them, he handed them over to me. So, not too long ago. So, pretty cool. Um, go back in the, you know, later on you can watch the replay if you missed anything. Extra views. Alright. So, next one. We're gonna, uh, in fact, let me take a little drink here. You were smart as a kid because you actually kept the boxes. See, I know, I mean, most kids were like, you know, they just took everything out. Here's the game. All right, everything good's thrown in the trash. So you only had the game. And I always hated that because I thought for me, it was part, you know, I loved the boxes. I thought the boxes were so cool. Um, and then again, stuff like that, you know, in pristine, perfect condition. And I played the hell out of that. Um, so yeah. All right. So I guess next uh next one. In fact, hold on a second. I need to take a little little vapey poo. We might have to make this a like a two or three stream thing if if it keeps going like this cuz I keep telling stories. Um all right. Okay, wow. Uh, I should have put the, so there's just a ton of stuff in there. Old Pez. So, yeah. All right. So this is all, oh man. So most of this, it looks like a lot of this was... Power of the Force era action figures, Star Wars. You didn't keep the Nintendo cereal. Your brother ripped the boxes. Yeah. I just never understood that. But then there's some Lego in here. It's all Star Wars stuff. But you can see there's just a ton. Uh, episode 1 to that Power of the Force era stuff. Because I had a few of them that I collected. And then I set them up on my shelf and stuff. And then I ran out of room. Um, I know a lot of this stuff. Oh. The candy just fell out of that one. What the hell? Oh, it's because it's, it's open. Um, and so is that. Oh, the glue. Okay, I'm gonna have to figure something out on that. But I have a, and I don't think I bought these. In fact, my dad might have given me these, these old, uh, these old guys. So there's a Chewbacca, there's a, a Yoda. Um, oh yeah, Clone Trooper. Yeah, this was totally not me. And then 
C3PO and I'm gonna have to dig out the candy. Lucky for me, it's on top. All right. Okay, I bought this. This is all jacked. Oh yeah, this is all jacked up. But it's the old Lego destroyer droid. I like Lego, man. What can I say? I don't even know. I can't remember how it works. But it, you... Oh, that's how. Oh, and the... <laughs> There's uh, rubber, like rubber bands here. They're supposed to be tight, and they're not anymore. Because they've been sitting in storage. But it rolled up in a ball, and when you rolled it, it would hit this button here. This... Oh, you can't see that this button here and it would, the legs would pop out. It's kind of cool. Um, but I love this, the design of this destroyer droid. Um, still stands up pretty well. Um, a vintage Star Wars, uh, lunchbox. Still sealed. From, let's see, is there a, there's no date on it. Oh, wait. 1999. Again, I don't... I don't even remember getting it. And, uh... This is just loose in there. Big old Darth Maul. And I think the, uh... There's, there's Lego pieces all down the bottoms. But, uh... The lightsabers are down there. And this, I think, yeah, there's a battery right there. And as you, when you twist it, the, the blades light up. But of course, the battery's probably dead and probably all corroded in there. Let's see, was it, uh, Shady J was asking about you in his YouTube chat the other day. Yeah, I was there. Um, I came later to the, to the stream and we talked a little bit. Because he was talking about smoking, and how I might have might have helped him along in his smoking journey, which I I feel bad for. Um, but I don't smoke anymore. I just vape. Vaping is ninety five percent safer. <laughs> I don't want to go into that, but yeah, um, vaping is much better for for you than smoking. The only things I think I have from my childhood are a Batman animated series clock that no longer wa works, and an original Sonic the Hedgehog big plush toy thing. Hmm. You did coke. David, you know, you were, you were, uh, you were definitely more advanced as a kid. The soda. David Rivas, everyone. <laughs> uh, here's another, ah, okay. Okay, some of these are original Star Wars, or original I'm not going to get all these out, but you can see, um, I have a bunch. These are, these were mine. These were mine, mine, but yeah. Um, let's see. EV nine, EV 90. No, eight D eight. I think the rebel trooper, there's a Padme in there. Uh, original Boba Fett kind of. Um, Bespin Guard, R2-D2, Hammerhead, which I don't remember his real name now. I remember that story how you helped Shady get over anger with a sick. Yes, that's it. And I felt bad for it because I was like, did I? And he said, well, no, that was my second cigarette. And I'm like, yeah, but if I helped you go, oh yeah, just have a cigarette and everything, you'll feel better. The medical droid, um... Adat driver, C-3PO, original C-3PO in there. An Ugnaught, you know, um, I've spoken. The uh, squid face dude, original Stormtrooper. So yeah, man, that's pretty cool. That was pretty cool to do a... Uh, and then this, I don't know what this is, but it's all jacked up. Darth Maul Sith Speeder. Oh, it's something from Pizza Hut. Why is it, why is it all jacked up? 
This is all. Huh. That's uh, goofy looking. But you remember these guys where you, where you, I wonder if it still works. Um. Uh, apparently it's gummed up with something because it won't, the little draw thing won't go in. Oh, no, 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 it does work. It's just really hard to, there we go. So. That sounds awesome. No, but yeah, little, you know, rolly thing. Yes, Pizza Hut. Pizza Hut, Taco Bell, whatever. This must have been my brother's. Because he was, uh, episode one, he would have been ten. Right? So. Oh. It has a, the galaxy can be yours. Darth Maul Sith Speeder was at Taco Bell. There you go. A Taco Bell thing. Some of this stuff was all uh, my brother's. And I think it's because he just didn't want them anymore. Since it was Star Wars, I was like, I'll take it. I'll be the of this stuff. So, like, I don't remember getting these. So this might, must be from, from them. But there's a, a bunch of micro machines. I know that the Darth Maul, I think the Darth Mauls were mine because I think there was something about, there was some variation that I was trying to get, I think. Who remembers the crappy VHS tape demo tapes? Huh? Oh, yeah. And yeah, David, Jay talks about you frequently and how, how much he loves your, your trolley, trolley, trolley face. Yes. Um, I mean, there's some cool stuff in here. Um, it's not in great shape, but it is boxed. Django Fett sneak preview for Attack of the Clones. And I, they, again, I don't know you would take any leftover games and toys. I know. And some of this stuff... Oh, yeah, see, I'm, I'm pretty sure I would have bought that because I loved the Destroyer droids. I thought they were the coolest thing. Um, that's actually in pretty good shape. The card's a little bent up here at the top, but not bad. But, I mean, most of this stuff is just... Uh, I think it was... These Darth Maul ones. Something with these that were rare, and I think I got some of the rare ones. But they're all bent up and jacked up now. Again. I think that's one of the things about me is I never collected to to have stuff. You know, it was like I just wanted to collect stuff that I wanted to display. And I guess it's because I don't I didn't like being like a storage unit. If that makes sense. I mean, I say this with all these boxes, but. All right, let me put this stuff back up real quick. Because this is a mess. Uh, I don't know. But like, how could I get rid of my original Star Wars toys? You know, I already, I remember I got rid of, uh, I just love this. This thing's cool. I kind of want to display this. It's kind of neat. Um, but uh, I, I don't remember wanting to get rid of my Millennium Falcon, you know, my, my uh, Imperial Shuttle. But I think, I think my brother took him. Clean up, clean up, everybody clean up by selling it to the Pawn Stars. Well... You have the Nintendo 64 box, but you don't have the original console that it came with. 
have its original console. Oh, so you still have the box, right? I don't think I have any of those boxes. I know I have, I think it's in the next box is the, the game systems. Just hold on now. I'm not, I don't care about this Pez. It's not going to be worth it. You close. Just loose Pez everywhere. Good okay. Where are we? 506. Okay. Everybody doing okay? You had the green 64. I just had the original one, the the regular one. You don't I you don't know what to say the monkey would do, the animaniacs? Huh? <laughs> but I hope you guys are enjoying this. I this is this is fun. This is this is fun. Uh I'm probably going to have to pause and just go get me some more uh some tea or something. You're I, You're not my father, David. You're not my dad. My dad My dad is in chat, I think. But you guys are doing okay? Okay, good. Good. I am glad and happy. All right. So I think I can explain that. Um, we, when we moved out of our apartment to get our house, we had to move in with uh, my wife's parents for a spell. So we had to mark where to put stuff. So there's some of them like, like that one right there. It says number one storage, number two workout room. So that was stuff that our plans, Rob's dad's awesome. <laughs> Thanks Leon. Yeah. And, and we had a, we had a great time the other night uh, or the other day talking through some of that stuff, but we're, we're going to help you out. Um, but anyway, so yeah, the whole deal was we had to, we knew that we were going to live there for a bit. And then some of it was going to come with us. And then some of it was going to go to storage. And some of the stuff I didn't want, even, you know, my old game systems. Uh, <laughs> uh, David, funny guy. But yeah, we, uh, we had to, we had to mark boxes two ways. So where they were original, they were going for the first move and then we were, they were going for the second move. So we knew what they were. Um, because again, when you guys, I'm not, I know you guys are the same way. Moving sucks. And when you're trying, if you're going to know, if you know, you're going to be staying the way that we had to do it, that's how, that's how we had to do it. We had to know, we knew that that's how it was going to go down. So anyway, let's dig in. Let me show you. There's a bunch of stuff in there. And there's some games too. There's perfect dark down there. So let's see what we got. First, I want to open this. Ah, Metroid Prime 2. So I guess that was the last game I was playing. Uh, that's smart, which, oh, the marking of the boxes. Well, that was the problem is that we were moving in with them temporarily before our house was built. And we knew basically what the layout was going to be, but it was just, we were trying to be organized. But yeah, that's my GameCube and uh, it's in good shape. I still have the, the wireless, oh, my memory card. So yeah, um, pretty cool. And I've always liked the design of the GameCube. I just think it's awesome. 
A um, little dusty, but it's okay. An NTSC GameCube, yeah? Yes, sir. With Metroid Prime 2 in there. Leon is an Iron Chef. I don't know if he's there yet, but you know what? We're, we're going to help him get there, hopefully. The cheap boxes, yes. I never knew the GameCube could vape. I'm not going to do that. Wait. I was going <laughs> to... I was going to put a bunch of vape in there and then open it up and be like, but no, that'd probably be bad. Digital out. Yep. Digital AV out, analog out. So this is like a, can you tell? Well, let me hold that up there. DOL 001. So I assume that's the first variation of it. You have two wave birds? I do. I have two. But yeah. Um, wave birds. I'm always afraid when I open up battery compartments. Uh, to see the, uh, so that's a first generation then. Okay. Always, always afraid of, uh, ah, uh, yeah. See, that one might be jacked. The, uh, corrosion down there. Battery acid leaked out. Didn't think about that stuff when I was packing. See, I had it set up where at one point I had, like when we first got married, which was 20 years ago. Um, I had them all hooked up. I had the Nintendo. I had a, at the time I had a PlayStation 2000, 2001. That would have been what? PlayStation 2? Whichever PlayStation was. You need to look in the back for the digital out. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, I had it where I had switch boxes back in those days where you could switch between sources because most TVs in that time period didn't have multiple enough ends to do that kind of stuff. So I had switch boxes so I could go, okay, switch to Nintendo, Super Nintendo, GameCube, 64, whatever. Lamb 15, he cheered a bit. Thanks. Hope you're enjoying. We're just kind of going through this stuff. Um, ah. Dreamcast controller. Any Dreamcast fans out there? I gotta say, I love my Dreamcast. I did. Okay. So we're gonna put these with the other games. Even though they're not Nintendo games. Oh my gosh, okay. Some of these are not in great shape. Hmm. Funko Land. Air Force Delta for Dreamcast. The Dreamcast, you didn't get it? Eagle Ford, I'm his father. <laughs> uh, let's see what we got. Hey, there's a an Atari. Because my wife liked the... You know, the uh, older games. And again, pristine. That one's pristine. Tomb Raider, the last revelation on Dreamcast. I don't remember buying that. Toy Story 2. Um, House of the Dead 2. Hmm. Rush 2049 with no game in it. Let's see. You're going to hear it? They're, they're going to make a Dreamcast Mini? I sure hope so. I will buy it because I enjoyed it. The DSi is broken. My eyes are broken. Yeah. That's the... I don't even have one, I don't think. You weren't gaming anymore when the Dreamcast came out? Yeah. And then there's a uh, Racer on Dreamcast. 
Bucho, you missed all the things. You missed a lot of things. But we had to keep going. We couldn't just wait. You should play the Sega Genesis version of Toy Story. I could do that. <laughs> Leon. Uh, oh, no. Sorry. David said that. Sorry. I just bought a Japanese Saturn and a Terra Onion mode for it so it can finally check out some of those games. Ah. I didn't even... Hey. Hey. Let's keep digging. For Dreamcast. <laughs> Bucha, thank you for letting me know, David. Uh, Interact Starfire Light Blaster. GameSack review this. And this, this one was kind of cool because it had two button modes. I'm guessing you could reload here. Like if you hold, you know, you could reload and then fire. Reload, fire. There's a... Anyway, kind of cool. Um, holy crap. Dreamcast is heavy. Oh, and look at there. 2049 on the inside. Why don't we just go ahead and put that up? And then what was what was the game that was Oh, Prime. I can get that out. Dusty as hell, but it it I guarantee you it still works. Um Okay, a bunch of cables. A super dirty Super Nintendo. Let's see, what, what we got here? You fold your laundry. No, I hung it on the line. Today's a public holiday. I get to do washing on a Monday. I also catch a rare Monday Order 42 episode. Yes. Butcher, go wash the dishes. I already did the dishes. National Kiss a Sheep Day. <laughs> Leon. And then here is a 64. And it was a demo at, at Blockbuster. Um, this thing was barely used when I bought it. And I've got the, uh, the what is that called? Jump, jump pack? Um, we're having national art countries imploding... Now, today is National Punch and Aussie Day. <laughs> At least my NES is, in, is still the original color. Well, I think I could just clean that up. It'd be good, you know? Um, you son of a gun, I don't have a jump pack. Isn't that what, what is it called? Expansion pack? Because I think you needed it for, like, the Mode 7 stuff, right? Yeah. Um, okay. Of course, there's controllers. Oh. Forgot about this one. Is this Dreamcast? Dreamcast Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Um, this is used, so I just have the disc and the manual. But no... Backing. So cool. Your SNES console has the Game Boy Color one. Hmm. I don't know what that means. Because I thought the Game Boys were that color. Unless you're being a troll again. James! Oh, I can't do the... What's that? Oh, games! I can't do it as well as I can. But you know. Uh, let's see what we got here. 
Don Kong Country? Don Kong Country 2? Ha ha ha! Ha ha! SimCity! Okay, I'm pretty sure this could be a collector's item. Really just for Billy and Jay. Because, David, I mean, Leon, you're here, right? Look at this. Focus. Focus. Come on, focus. Jar Nintendo. The sun makes your old Nintendo consoles yellow. Yes, it does. But Leon. This, I got this from the place that inspired Billy. Which I didn't realize it said that on the back. That's awesome. A Sim City with Jar Nintendo on it. I'm being serious. The consoles only go yellow to a reaction in the plastic. Putting them in the sun helps restore them. Google it. Really? That's interesting. So like this. This is, this is my controller for my fan, and it's, it's yellowing. Do you think that could... But isn't that freaking awesome? I'm, I'm, put, I'm keeping... In fact, where's my phone? I'm going to do this right now because I think they would love this. Both Billy and Jay would love that. Uh, let's see. Come on. Can I add someone? How do I do that? How do I phone? Yes, return and to J. Going through my old games on stream, found a copy of what is this? Super Nintendo. Uh, Sim city and look at what's on the back what happened Okay, message send failure. Okay, I did something wrong. Hold on. Uh, you're right, but wrong. You put them on in the sun and come... <laughs> Dave. David. The sun does not do that. It works even better if you focus the sun's rays through a huge magnifying glass. <laughs> Never heard of the sun making it wider. It just makes them yellow. Actually, you put the glue... Oh my gosh. You guys are just trolling! Uh, copy. Now, let me try this again. Let's send, let's delete that. Delete. Billy. That's, that's awesome though. Guys, that is just, that is so, oh, and Leon, uh, since you're here, I watched Rebecca and watched the credits and look at there, special effects technicians, Leon. So yay, Leon. I, the movie wasn't great. But it looked insanely good. So good job on that one, buddy.
Let's move on. Star Fox. Of course, Mario World. Everybody's got that. Super Castlevania 4, right? Uh, oh. I think they're replying. Oh, they're replying. <laughs> Hold on. Let's see what they said. Uh, huh? The link. Jay said, wow. Billy said, no way. That's awesome. But I got Link to the Past. Mario Kart. So, yeah. You put them, no, you put them in the washing machine. Yes. I think what you have to do is you have to put 17 layers of cheese on it. Yes. Cheers. Oh no, cheese, cheese. You put cheese on it and then bake it at like 376 degrees for like seven days. That'll do it. They'll, they'll come out looking just, ooh, looking great. Take picture. Take picture of what? The cheese? Yes. Yeah, you, you, you try it. Apparently, I got rid of a bunch of games because I only have five 64 games here. A Mario Kart 64 from from Oklahoma, a blockbuster Oklahoma. Cruising, there's the old 48034 again. Shows you the on the back. You must purchase this video, but it shows the uh, the codes and all that stuff. Just kind of neat. I bet that's cool to see your name in the credits. Yes, Leon. That's I thought that was awesome. It, it was one of those things where it was just like it's just like when I was uh when I was in the theater uh watching uh, episode nine with my nieces and nephews, and I'd already told them about Yoshi, and when we saw Yoshi's name. I got this, this swell of pride, you know? I was so, it was like, man, I'm so proud of him, you know? GoldenEye, another used copy, 48034. No store code, or barcode. There's your Rogue Squadron. And Perfect Dark. I am making a huge freaking mess, and there's no way I'm gonna do, clean it all up on stream, but. We still got two more boxes to go. Um, but that's kind of cool, right? All those games. games. Whatever Billy does. And then Jay does a ah! thing. Yeah, all that stuff. I'm not good at that. I'm, I already look goofy enough as it is. Who's a dinosaur? Yoshi doesn't exist? Ah. No one stays to look at the credits anyway. Um, you know, that's one of those things where it depends on who you are and it's, it's one of those things, man. Like I, for a long time, I would stay all the way to the end, not knowing anybody just because I like the, of course I'm a score junkie too. Cause I like the music, but, uh, but yeah, now I have an even better reason because I'm looking for people who I might know, which I think is cool. Um. The only thing left in there is uh, uh, just cables and like a 64 controller. Um, stuff like that. So hold on a second while I just get all this off my desk. So we can move on to the next thing. Nice. 
I like I like having things where they're supposed to go. Is the Coke cans on your desk? I'm not drinking Coke. What are you talking about? David, you are a, you are a gem. I mean, imagine, imagine being David Revis, where he, he's like, every day, I want somebody to look at me like, huh? Like, so confused. Like, is, is the confusion, is that what you, you just love that. You love the confusion. It's funny, man. All right. I have too much Star Wars stuff. What happened? Nightbot timed out. Stop posting links. What did you do, David? I mean, uh, Leon? Was it Leon that did it? Holy crap. Let me see why here. Um, oh, Nightbot did it. <laughs> um, dashboard. Recent events. Come on, dude. Refresh. Retro game boards, yellowing old consoles, the solution la. Ah. Yeah. Yeah, you can't post that. Sorry, Leon. You were just timed out for five seconds. It wasn't that big of a deal. I thought it I thought it deleted like all your messages again. Oh, I just posted a link for reversing yellow yellowing consoles. Is there a way for me to, how do I do that? Can I, um, wait, I'd have to do that in here on the stream thing, right? Community. Let's see. Mm. What's a what, what can a VIP do? If I make you a VIP, does that mean that um how to how to what are the we yeah, but what are the While VIPs are immune to Twitch chat option settings, including auto mod, block hyperlinks, and slow, they are not immune to actions by channel moderators. Dude, I'm just going to make you uh, a VIP. There we go. See if you can, you, see if you can uh, post that link now. You should be able to now. Let me see. You are the brains of the operation. <laughs> You're a helmet. Oh, you Facebook messaged me? I don't have Facebook pulled up here on this one. Um, but I was just going to see if it would allow you to do it now. Because I just made you a VIP. And a VIP means you should be able to post whatever the hell you want. In fact, you should get a new... I think you get a new badge. little badge there. I think. Cause I know you're not gonna do anything crazy. Cause I, I, I like know you're, I know you. There you go. I don't think you can ban anybody, but there you go. See, now you have a, now you have a fun, uh, fun badge. So yeah, but let's not mess with all of that right now. Okay. Oh my God. Okay. So night. <laughs> You son of a bitch. Um, links. <laughs> okay. Sorry, Leon. <laughs> you were timed out for 600 seconds. Oh my gosh. Um, how do I change that? Recent timeout. Um, 
Timers, no. Logs. Okay, here. Oh my gosh. Okay. That sucks. That Nightbot still prevented you from doing it. Okay. There's the link, everybody. Um, God. See, this is what happens. I have on, on your chat. But I show that it says seven messages were deleted by the moderator. <laughs> Nightbot timed out Leon for 600 seconds. Reason, stop posting links. And I don't know how to change that on here. Uh, maybe I should just take that off. But there's a part of me that thinks that people will, you know, post crazy links that I'm not sure I want in there. Um, options. Exempt. Exempt user level. VIP. So in theory, he should be able to do it now because I just allowed VIPs to post links. So Leon, if you're listening and not super pissed off that I basically forced you to time yourself out, um, when you come back, you should be able to do the thing. So. But I posted the link for you. Um, Tim Eater, hello. How's it going? Um, yeah, we're just going through the things. Um, we're going through, in fact, it is, I feel like the heat is on. The heat is on. Such a goofball. Um. But yeah, we're going through stuff. Let's move on, shall we? But good to see you. Um, in this box, apparently, is Star Wars stuff. And I think this just has a bunch of all kinds of stuff. So, let's go through it. So yeah, this is recent. I must have just put this on top. Um, more Star Wars Lego little little sets, which is is that a Black Series Tie Fighter? Little Tie Fighter guy. Again, a lot of times people would just give me Star Wars stuff. I didn't ask for it. They just give it to me because they know I'm a huge Star Wars fan, which I am. I'm not, I'm, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, uh, what do you call it? Um, I appreciate it. I just, I didn't ask for it. I remember buying this because it was a, a sneak preview. I think this came out in 98 and unopened. It's in pretty freaking good shape, but I think it's worth like nothing. Because nobody gave a crap about the battle droids or the staps. But I thought it was cool. So I bought it. Back in the day. And. There you go. Mail in for Mace Windu. Which I never did. Um, and the only thing in here is a bunch of Power of the Force wrapped. And they're. Not in good shape. They're bent up. They're whatever. But um, again, I think these were some that my stepmom bought for my brother back in the day. But the cards are not in good shape. So, I mean, I would say like for a completionist. See like that right there, Leon. Look at how yellow that is. I don't know if that got in the sun or if that's because of some sort of. Like, I don't know, but it, that definitely is discolored. It's like brown. And Boba Fett's not brown, so I don't know. Um, I'm taking a huge risk here. You would just your 20 bucks for these stuff. What? No. 20 bucks? You can't wait for Lego Star Wars, the Skywalker Saga. You and me both, Tim. Uh, or time. Time Eater? 
dude, my eyes are going bad. I can't read that. Just the color in the chat, it makes it where the E, it looks like one E to me from here, but I'm, I guess I'm getting old. But anyway, it says time eater. Sorry. But yes, I'm there right there with you, dude. I cannot tell you how excited I am. I just don't know what system to buy it on. Cause I think I'm going to get a PS five eventually, but will I be able to get a PS five by the time that comes out? So I can buy it on PS5. Waka, waka, waka. <laughs> what is the, the Star Wars adult version? No. No, no, David. Please. Um, man. Leon, are you back? <laughs> I'm so, I feel so bad. Uh, but anyway. Let's move on. Um. Yeah, I mean, there's... Here, where's the camera? Let me get the camera here. Let me show you. There's just a bunch of loot. I mean, they're random uh, power of the force. There's nothing like crazy in there. Uh, yeah, poor Leon. I mean, I did buy this. Oops. Because I think it's cool looking. Um, and I'm a big R2-D2 fan. But it's not worth anything. Look, there's my lights and stuff. Here, sit there for a second. Sorry. There's just nothing in there that, that's, I mean, at least to me, is that interesting because it's most, there's a lot of newer stuff in that box. Which I, for some reason I thought it was, uh, I thought it was a bunch of old stuff. But, but power, I mean, if you're, if you're a collector of, action figures you know that the power of the force is just kind of like yeah there's some cool ones but all the the rant the um what do you call them what do you call those when they're the commons nobody really cares no. so although it is cool it's just not like david you need to stop messing with leon man Leon's a good dude. Taco Bell, more like Taco Balls. <laughs> okay, Time Eater. I remember those Star Wars Episode One toys. I got the Taco Bell toy, and I had the Communicator toy. The, um, yes, the ComTech reader. I never got that. I have a bunch of those ComTech things, but I don't have the reader. But, again, I was, what, 23? At that point, and 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 again, th if you remember, uh, Taco Smell, yeah, you were eight. Okay, okay. Well, see, you're you you're yeah. It's no big deal. But see, it's weird because like, in that time period, it wasn't cool to like that stuff. At any like like like, I don't know. Not that I was trying to be cool, but. 22, 23 years old. I'm going to go buy some episode one stuff. Wait, the one with Jar Jar? Yeah. It just wasn't, wasn't cool. Um, give me a second, guys. I just want to check because apparently there was some... Really? There was some pretty bad storms headed this way at some point tonight. I just wanted to make sure that we're all good. Oh, it's still clear. Now it says rain possible at 11.30. Hmm, okay. Then never mind. Because this morning it said at 6.30 it was going to hit. All right, I can't believe we did it. One more box. One more box. And this box is 80s craziness. All I did was open the box and went, oh yeah, okay. I know what's in this box. So here we go. Actually, a little drink. Oh my gosh. Here, I'm gonna... Uh... I mean, it is kind of funny that Leon was timed out, but it's not funny. Because, I mean, come on. Leon was... Leon's a cool dude. 
episode one PS one game was trash. I don't even remember that one. I remember um, like in one of the, I have a box of old CDs and I have like all the soundtracks and you know, just the CDs that I wanted to keep everything else. I basically just traded in for something, whatever. Um, he's a, Are you wait 600 seconds? That's 10 minutes. Nightbot timed out Leon because Nightbot loves me more. Yeah, the plastic in consoles is different, it has bromine, is what he's saying. Did you watch Ewoks the Battle for Endor? Made oh my god, yes. Um. That one, there was a, a caravan of, court, of courage. I've I've seen both of them, and they're pretty bad. I mean, let's be honest. I think Wilford Brimley is one of those kind of meme you know, the diabetes and all that kind of stuff. But, I mean, did he belong in Star Wars? Did he belong in a Star Wars movie? Uh, not to me. And those movies were cheesy as hell. But of course, we ate them up because, you know, I was what? 85, I was nine years old. So yeah, you bet your ass I was watching that. Oh. But yeah. Uh Let's see. Where 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 did I end up here? Uh not my fault he did. Uh, you seen the Ridley Scott director's cut of Caravan of Courage? <laughs> it's like a whole different movie. N- no. Uh he was caught selling insurance to an Ewok. <laughs> Episode 1 Racer was probably my favorite. N64 movie licensed racer. That's very specific. Because <laughs> I don't think there's any other movie licensed racers. Right? But it is awesome. That's a fun game. And I had it, uh, as I showed earlier, I have it on Dreamcast. So. Hold on a second, guys. Sorry. Uh. Anyway, yeah. Back to back to the show. Uh, he's kind of. You sold Lucas condo. Star Wars Episode One: Racer is that the first movie or fourth movie? Right. Um, that would be the fourth movie, but it's the first one in the series chronologically, but. It was released 22 years later. So, technically, yes, it's the first movie, but it came out after the fourth, fifth, and sixth movie. <laughs> Did you have Star Wars Online? Star Wars. David. Let's just, let's just chill, David. The debug code? I remember that. I just don't remember how to, what it does, but yes. Um, could I don't remember what you could get with all that, but yeah. I love, man. I love those games, man. They, a lot of these games I really did enjoy. Some of them were kind of crap. Some of the Dreamcast ones didn't come out really good, but I remember the. I just remember being uh, hashtag blown away by the uh, by the the graphics of the Dreamcast. I was really. Uh, Blown away. Oh, and just for good measure, um, there's my hair. All crazy like. All right. So this is going to be the last box. I can't believe we got through it all. 
But a couple of them were just kind of like, hey, look at what's in here. It's kind of cool. But this is 80s kid heaven right here. You ready? So here we go. And again, yes, that is a blockbuster box. <laughs> David. Uh, modifying my emote. That is a box of blockbuster popcorn. White cheddar cheese popcorn from 2003. We're going to eat some. No. Um, yeah. Oops. Wrong button. But yes. There's a lot of uh, Transformers and stuff in here. So this is going to be cool. Um, I was a huge Transformers fan. Um, kind of like, you know how like, uh, kids were, uh, you never knew I was a hippie. Oh yeah. A popcorn box is more than meets the eye. You are not wrong, Bucho. Not wrong. But you know how, uh, you know how like you can be a fan of Raiders of the Lost Ark or the, the Indiana Jones movies and the Star Wars movies, but you know deep down you like more one more than the other whichever one that is for me you can like gi joe and you can like transformers but you're gonna like more one more than the other well i was a transformers guy i love transformers um as you can see this one was one of my favorites old hot rod loved it Oh, David. Uh, but yeah, so you got... Hot Rod and Rodimus Prime. But for some reason, I'm missing Hot Rod's... Uh, well, this part. But I always liked Hot Rod because um, as a Transformer, he looked cool. Um, but, of course, Rodimus Prime looks like a goof. Transformed. Oh, my gosh. This plastic... Uh... I mean, that is a goofy looking transformer as a robot. He doesn't do anything. He doesn't move. At least as, as a robot here, he kind of had a, a cool look to him. This just looks dumb. So I was not a huge fan of the, uh, the old uh, Rodimus Prime. I would have rather just played with the... I just liked him as Hot Rod. And plus, it's like, hey man, we're going to take this really cool looking sports car looking awesome thing... And turn it into a freaking... What is this? What a terrible idea. Well, we're kind of trying to make him like Prime. And, you know, Prime had his... Yeah, I get it. But, no. So, anyway. There's those. Some of these are heavily played with. So, things don't snap as much. But you got Grimlock here. Um... This is very loose. <laughs> uh, your transformer turned into your underwear. Well, that's that's good. But yeah, transform uh, Grimlock. The uh, I, there's some of these I don't know who they are, and there's probably just pieces all over the place. Like this was some some Decepticon, and it was a beast thing and it's a and it had the little heads the heads were like little robots too you remember those dinobots were cool you also had a it also had a, a hole on it david you are in rare form today sir just just chill man just chill out of it a bit um i don't remember these it's it's not an aerial bot, it's something else. 
Um, of course, Megatron, and I don't have all the pieces to Megatron. And and again, just loose. I played, man. I played with these. These were my my Transformers, and it was weird to make the. I mean, look at how. Look at how jacked up the 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 uh, the stickers are. I mean, this thing is heavily used. I mean, the Decepticon symbols worn off. I love man. I love my Transformers, man. I loved them. Uh, let's see. Again, another little one that I don't even remember who they are. This one was one of my favorites, Power Glide. Uh, because I loved A10s. And uh, I also thought he looked kind of cool as a robot. Um, oh, this is kind of funny. I don't know why this is in here. But this is the thing that you, they used at Blockbuster to open the... Uh, the cases with the the locks the magnetic locks this is what this is i don't know why i have this but i have it uh you're jealous too bad the new me me uh megatron does not transform into a gun anymore yeah what is he now a gorilla i can't or is he a tank now i don't know man but yes i know what you mean um again Heavily played with and loose. This is part of Devastator. I don't know their names. I can't remember. But I've got all the Devastator stuff. Uh, I've got a, a, a floppy disk in here. I have a... I have a manual for a Sanyo 8200. I used to work at Sprint, too. So I just have stuff. I don't think I need this anymore. Or maybe I should keep it. I don't know. Anybody have one of these as a kid? I'm kind of curious. I have a... David, you're so strange, man. Anything good on the floppy? Pfft, how do I know? Talk about a nostalgia trip. Yes. But do you, does anybody have one of these as a kid? It's basically this thing where it's, I don't want to break it, but it's like a, it's almost like a, a fidget toy almost from the eighties. And you could make things like this here. Hold on. I can't remember how to do this. It's been too long. Yeah, look. So it's like a snake. Like a cobra. But yeah. I used to love this thing. I, play, I used to play with it. Well, you can tell it's loose as hell. I used to play with this thing all the time and make different shapes in it. Um, let me see if I can... Oh, dude, I, I got this. Dude, it's weird. It's weird how your muscle memory, you can remember how to do stuff like this. Like the thing and you turn it and then that and then... I did it so much that I can remember. <laughs> that is so weird. Um, uh, I think that needs to go like this. this and then like... No. Dude, it's been, it's been a while. Anyway. It's kind of cool. Um, Insecticon? Let's see. Constructicons. Got them all, but I know that there was pieces of of Devastator that I was missing. So, uh, snakes. Why didn't it have to be snakes? I hate snakes. <laughs> oh, and there's just a ton of GI Joe weapons and stuff, and I think Transformer weapons too. Oh yeah. 
Yeah, all basically all the loose parts went in here. So there you go. Um, so I have that. Um, so that was originally inventory support, then customer service. That's why I have it here. Oh, I think this was one of my first transformers, wind charger. Um, another insecticon. I always kind of like them. I like their voices. Hey, what's up, Leon? Sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, don't feel bad. How did I buy clearly? <laughs> <coughs> now, my absolute favorite Transformer is right here, and I don't want to break him, but it feels like I could break him because it's not. It's not working. Why is that not folding? Ah. He's a little janky because I play with him a lot and transformed him a lot. Jazz. I love Jazz. And I really love Jazz because I thought he looked cool as a robot. He looked cool as a. And that's why I like the Masterpiece Transformers that they've come out with recently, because the same thing. The, the vehicles look good, and the robot forms look good. Like, Grimlock is cool and all, he's a cool character, but he looks dumb. He's got a tiny little head. Um, come on, man, the classic. Original. Original Soundwave. And he's janky as hell. And I think, I think his legs come off, which I don't think they're supposed to. But, yeah. Look at that. In the back, you know, it's got the, this little cover. And these are his, uh, there's a, like a shoulder mounted thing and, and a, and a gun, I think. That's all in there. It's kind of cool. Scourge, some space shuttle Decepticon, the, the Blasticons, the Articons, I don't know what they were. Scourge was a weird one, just a weird design. Hot Rod? You mean Hot Rod? And Rodimus Prime? Yeah. Uh, I think the original Transformers movie is canon like between season two and three. Yeah, it is weird. Um, but it's strange too because you can, you can tell that dip in quality. It kind of sucks. Um, one of the aerial bots in that 15. And it's, boy, that's bent. That's been through some some heat, some summer, some te uh, like Texas summers. Look at how bent that is. Yeah. This probably shouldn't be in this box, and that would be why. Those are old cell phones, and it looks like a battery exploded in there. Why did I do this? I worked for Sprint. I knew better. Hello, I'm Rob and I'm an idiot. Okay. This is an old, like a Leatherman knockoff. I don't know why that's in there. Great neck. All right. Yep. 
There you go. You have a drug phone. Yeah. At least I kept them in a bag. Yeah, but still. I got that from my mother, Shirley. Which one? It's possible. Now, okay. I do have some... I do have some more floppy drives, floppy disks. I think I had um, backups on these, if you could believe it. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Um, but I had a lot of them for my keyboard. My, my keyboard used floppies. So some of them have sounds and stuff like that, and that's the only reason I would have kept them. But there you go. There's 64 voices, 16 performances for the Roland XP50, which is what this keyboard right here that doesn't work anymore. They're just goofy. Why is there a like a tire? What? Do you, um, this is a. It's like a survival thing, I think. I don't remember. Oh, there's stuff all over this. If I blow myself up, can you all uh, call the cops? Or call the fire department just in case something blows up in here? Tire gauge? Okay, this is why I needed to go through this stuff. Uh, an old crappy precision screwdriver set. Okay. Now this is, there's going to be some of you that are going to look at this, a window breaker and a seatbelt cutter. Yes. What's, there's stuff all over it. It's like this weird black, <laughs> put it out in the sun. <laughs> window breaker, yes. Um... Can I hear the ringtones? I'm pretty sure that that phone is from 20 years ago and that's not going to boot up. Only works with consoles, Bucha. Right. It only works with consoles. But some of you, I, I don't even know if people in the in outside the U.S. would even know what this is, but I know that there's probably some people, older people in the U.S. that will know what this is that might remember seeing it. It's been in some movies really just kind of in the background. But I have one of these. This was a handheld game system. You could you could play tic-tac-toe. There was a music machine, Echo, which is kind of like Simon, Blackjack, Magic Square and Mindbender. This was from 1978. And I still have it and it's and it takes 320 batteries. No, it takes six AA batteries. I wonder if it still works. It's kind of cool, though. Yeah, it's not a phone. Um, but I still have the manual for it. So, kind of cool. There's so much loose stuff in here. I'm not going to... There. It, this is already cr a crazy mess. So, first mobile console. It, it's one of those little handheld things from back then. I had one that it was a... It was supposed... It was like a video game. But do you remember um, in Jaws, there's a part where they're shooting a shark in a, in a video game, and all it is is just a bunch of moving, like, pieces of plastic? I had one of those where it was on, it was basically ships, like like airplanes and tanks and stuff on a track that moved around. And you had a little, like a, a yeah, stuff on, I don't know what that, that might be from the phone. Anyway, um, 
Yeah, David is, he, he could be swooning me. But, um, I forgot what I was saying. Because I got sidetracked. What was I talking about? Oh, yeah, yeah, the, the track thing. So it had a, it had a, you had a little tank at the bottom and you shot missiles. And the missiles moved with your, and all it was was a, a light that went up. And so as you moved this thing, it mechanically moved and then shot the missile. And I had weird stuff like that. Um, I have no idea where that is. It's probably in the trash somewhere. But I'm just going to show you, put the camera here, because I don't want to pick all that up and try to show it all to you. But there's Metroplex, there's Jetfire, there's Wreckgar down there. There's some other weird Transformer. Um, this one here, I don't know what this is. I think they were called Headmasters. There's some G.I. Joe in here. Um, and then, this is stuff for, for Ninja Turtles, but they're not in here. They must be in some other box. Somewhere. But, I don't know that. What was that movie? Um, but anyway, his, his bottom half is gone. Yeah, man. That's some stuff. So there you go. Dr. Mindbender. Metroplex and Jetfire. See, I always call him Skyfire because that's what they called him in the, in, the, in the cartoon. They called him Skyfire. But yeah, it is Jetfire. Um, battery acid is pretty sticky and gets everywhere. Yep. If you saw that box at a garage sale, you would buy it in a heartbeat. What's kind of funny is that in the Game Chasers movie, there's a box that they, it's kind of like that. Um, G.I. Joe movie with the rock sucks. With the rock? Oh, the actual, the G.I., the 2009? Yeah, I, n I never watched that. Or maybe I did. No, I did watch it. And I remember the Storm Shadow and Snake Eye stuff was kind of cool, but everything else was pretty bad. Lithium is pretty horrible stuff. Yeah, I'm not going to lick my hands. That's for sure. I've set it aside, so hopefully it won't do anything. Uh, will the movie be sold on Amazon? That is a great question, Time Eater. Um... The, here's the here's 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 the deal. So last weekend, uh, Billy and Jay drove to Colorado to do some filming for pickup shots. Now I know they've both talked about this, and you've you know if you follow them on Twitter, you probably know you've seen some of the footage with the model uh, the model car basically getting some shots there. But they also got some just driving shots and things like that. Um, Eventually, Jay or Billy will come on and we'll talk about it on here again at some point. But like I said, didn't want to bug them. Um, so anyway, there's also some other shots that need to happen for a pivotal scene toward the end of the movie. The problem with that is that it requires a lot of people. And uh, that's a bummer right now because of the pandemic, right? If you have, I don't know what the actual rules are. Um, this is something that they've been looking into. Sorry, Twitter and me don't get along and, and don't have a Twitter account. Okay. Okay. That's fine. But basically, um, this is a long answer <laughs> for if it's going to be on Amazon. Um, there's still a lot left to be done. Some pickup shots that need to happen. Uh, did you catch a ban? I don't think he got banned. Oh, on Twitter is what you're asking. I don't know. He, yeah. Oh, he got banned. Okay. Okay. Well, anyway. Um. So yeah, it's basically there's there's still some work to be done, 
and there's a good chance that it will come out um, hopefully early next year. Um, but but it really just depends on how how much we can get done. And like what we're trying to do now is figure out where we're. We know what kind of stuff we need for the end of the movie. And I keep saying we because um, I'm going to be helping get some cast together again. Um, but uh, yeah. So like, for example, if there's, let's just say person A, B, C, and D and other people. We don't want to have person A, B, C, and D there at the same time if they're not going to be on camera. So we're only going to have, we're going to have less than 10 people around there at any given time. Um, <laughs> you weren't spending <laughs> moon landing hoax documentaries. Uh, <sighs> David, it's just it's just funny because David is he's one of those guys who you can tell he's he's a fan of you know the content and all that kind of stuff, but he also is like, I'm David, I've got I've got trolly things to say. Look, David, I just let's all be let's all be chill. Let's all be chill. We don't need to use that kind of that kind of language, please, please. Because David, man, seriously, I, I've, we've, you've been around Jay's chat and all that kind of stuff. Let's just, let's just chill out. Let's not be so edge lordy. Just have a good time. Let's be, let's, let's take it easy. Anyway, um, we don't know what, the, what the future holds for the pandemic. We don't know what the future holds for what's left to film. Um, because we don't know if we're going to be able to get it. Uh, we're we're going to be able to get it all done in a timely fashion. Color correction, sound editing, all the stuff that would have to be done still would have to be done for what we end up filming. Um, I blocked him. He's a mess. <laughs> yeah. When I make my account, I've not used it in months. And when I went to use it, I was banned. Yeah, that does happen. I, I, I've heard of that. I get on Twitter to honestly just really to help promote the show, but, but no, I get it. But anyway, the plan is if everything goes well, we have our, um, theatrical release, which will just be probably at the Texas theater in Dallas. And, um, and then, um, Sorry, I got sidetracked. Texas Theater, release the movie, or have our, our premiere, and then, of course, the Blu-rays go out and all that stuff. Then, at that point, once all of that's done, then we'll look at other avenues. So, in this day and age, it's weird. Because in this day and age, as you might know, the movies studios are in trouble because they can't make any money off of a theatrical release right now or the kind of money that they hope to make. And of course, because everybody's at home, a lot of people are still sheltering at home. They're keeping their distance and stuff and minimizing their time outside. Streaming is huge right now. So of course the game chasers movie, what they want is possibly to get with a Netflix or Amazon prime or whoever, and basically they would get paid to have it put on the service. The problem is there's, there are intellectual property kind of stuff that they need to be very careful about. So I would love to see it on Netflix. I would love to see it on Amazon prime, any of those places streaming so that people can watch the movie. But at the same time, I want to make sure that they are protected, that Billy and Jay's intellectual property, the game chasers, that they don't lose any of that. 
And I would hate for them to lose any sort of ability to make spinoffs or market other things around the movie for their own gains. For example, what if there was a Ghost Getters shirt? You know? If they ended up selling that, Netflix might, or whoever, Amazon, might require them to get a portion of that. I don't know how that works. That's not my avenue. But that's the kind of stuff that they have to protect themselves against. So there's, and of course you can't sell them a movie without a finished movie. So that's issue number one. Let's get the movie finished. Um, so yeah, you have one, right? But I mean, there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things. Yeah. Leon, Leon worked on the movie. Um, Leon did the special effects for the movie. So any, um, any kind of, well, Smoke effects, fire effects, things like that. Leon was the man. He handled all of that stuff. And he was great. And he came out for no reason. Well, I mean, he came out because he he wanted to help. But, oh my gosh. Leon was amazing. And a good, and a, just, a, just an all-around good chap. You'll buy the Blu-ray when and if it comes out, no matter what storefront. Yes. Well, now... As you see right above your thing there. Oh, that's a that's prime. Somebody put uh um exclamation point movie in chat, if you could. Um that will bring up the link to the Kickstarter or the Indiegogo where you can still pre order a Blu ray if you want. So you can do that. Um so anyway. Yes. I don't know if I have anything else to show you. I will show you. Actually, you can see it. That copy right there, that is an N64 copy of Ocarina of Time from Japan that I got from Beat 'em Ups Wood. Good old Wood Hawker. Um So that is something that definitely needs to be displayed. Because to me, it was very special. Wood was the first person that I really met. Um, you watch him, he's, he's a, he's, he's a good dude. So for me, that's, that's something really special for me because, you know, I meet him and he's giving me things (laughs) and it was just like, he's like, Hey, you, you play the switch, right? Yeah. Here, take this grip set. Awesome. I don't get paid by them. So, you know, you know what I'm talking about. If you've watched any of his videos, you know, he talks about the satisfied grips all the time. But uh, he gave me one of those. He gave me that. He gave me um, this, I don't know, promotional material for some game that he he said the game sucks. But um, yeah, I mean, he's just, he's a giving guy. He loves his grips. He does. He does. But it's just one of those things where, um, thank you, Leon. I didn't, I didn't see that you did that. Um, but he's he's, you know, that's just, I was so blown away, hashtag blown away, by his, uh, by his, uh, generosity, you know? And of course, the game chasers, all of those guys, Eric is great. Um, Chief is, ugh, Chief is amazing. Um, Game Dave, Jim. So, in fact, um, Time Eater, if you want to, there's, I know, I feel like I'm, I, hey, let's just promote away. But I think if you do, here, I think I can do this. I can't do this. On this, hold on. Let me see if this works. There you go. So YouTube, the, um, if you go to my channel, the Order 42 Show channel, you can see interviews with a bunch of those people. Um, and we talk a lot about the movies. Now, look for, we're the ones that say interview. <laughs> the ones that say hang out, you know, it could be me, Jay, and Eric, and I think Leon. We talked about UFOs for two hours. <laughs> it was ridiculous. It was fun, but it was also Leon and I were just kind of like <whistles> while Jay and Eric yelled at each other. It was pretty it was pretty fun. But it was also, you know, 
It's different. So if you're interested in, in, in some of that stuff, uh, and I worked, I was the script supervisor for the movie and I also do, uh, thank you. Thank you. Eagle Ford. Uh, fun and awesome. Yeah. Thanks Octavius. But I also do sound design and I do uh, like a little sound design thing on it. You had no idea what was going on. I thought you and me both. I just said, I said, so, Hey, what's with these aliens or what's with these UFOs? And they just went, they just, they just went and it was hilarious. I was cracking up the whole time, but then there's one point where Leon's just like, and he, he gets a game off his shelf and he's looking at the back of it. He's just not paying attention anymore. He's just like, he's uh, let's wait till they're done. And I felt that's when I was like, okay, I need to, I need to try to jump in here at some point and, and wrap this up because Holy crap, but it was fun. Um, and these guys have been great. You know, they come on, they, they've helped me out with this show. It's just fun. So just in case, if, if you want to check it out, you know, go check it out. It's pretty cool. But it's 6.30, um, and I don't have any more boxes to open. I mean, the only thing I have left over there are, you know, my music CDs, but... Uh, the next Game Chaser movie needs to be based in an old blockbuster and feature Jay and Eric arguing a lot. You know... You just got me thinking... Because uh, Billy and Jay, well, all of them really, they've all been kind of throwing ideas out about what, if, and when, because of course Billy and Jay, well, Billy in particular, he's very focused on doing what he can to get this movie done. But we've also talked a lot about what could come next. And I could see something like that being a thing. I could see that being a thing. So Bucho... Dude, we were talking about, it was funny, back in those days. So we, I worked there from 97 to 2000 at Blockbuster. And Billy and Jay were both there for roughly a year each. And we all, it all kind of overlapped. And that's where we all met. Rufus met Rufus there, all those, all those guys. We had talked about making a movie. You know, what would be funny if we could do basically a movie like Clerks, but with Blockbuster. And of course, at the time, Blockbuster was this huge company and there's no way that you could film in a Blockbuster, but a lot of fun. You got a copy of Mirror's Edge Catalyst PS4 for three cents at a Walmart clearance. Wow. Is it any good? And do you go to the only Blockbuster store to shoot? It is a thought. It is a thought. I was thinking even further than that, but I don't want to say anything. Yes, but yes, yes. I had some thoughts on that, which I thought I think might be interesting. Um, in fact, I almost want to take a screenshot of that. Uh, let me do that. Oh, I can't do that now. I can't do that now. Um, I couldn't do it here though, I think. I don't I don't know how to how do you do a print screen on on uh Chrome on Windows? I don't even know. Can you do it? This we're going old school. We're just gonna take a picture. Just because I don't want to forget this thought. And seeing that will jog the old memory. Yep, that's perfect. There you go. Um, so yeah. Freaking. Soundwave was always one of my favorites, if not my favorite Transformer. You know, and you know who's missing? I have Shockwave somewhere. And that bothers me that he's not in here, which means that there must be another box somewhere with some more Transformers. I thought I got them all, but I guess I didn't. Um, 
the last blockbuster and it's haunted with the ghosts of the dinosaur execs that didn't see the internet coming, right? You don't know, but you, you bought it because it was so cheap. Ah, right, okay. And you're not that computer savvy to do screenshots. It's fine. I, I took care of it. I took care of it. I just did an old school. Let's just take a let's just take a picture. Hey, take one of them there pictures. Take a picture of your screen there. And that way you you have it, and you can look at it when you're taking a dump. I don't know why you do that, but anyway, I guess we're gonna go ahead and shut it down, guys. I had a blast. This was fun. I hope you guys enjoyed it too. Um, I know there was a bunch of weird, crazy stuff. I mean, freaking old box of cell phones that apparently it's not on, it's not on the outside, but some of it is. I feel like that needs to be disposed of properly. So we don't have any fires. Thanks for the stream today. Mayoral Digital, it is a pleasure, sir. It's always a pleasure seeing you in, in chat and just hanging out. It's awesome. Cool looking through your stuff. Throw that bag out. Well, like I said, we got to gotta make sure that we don't, uh, you know, start a fire. I don't, want, I don't want that to happen. But thank you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. I had so much fun today. Uh, this actually went pretty well. I was, I was kind of, I was kind of hoping it wasn't going to be terrible, but thank you so much guys for just hanging out and watching, you know, watching this and then, and chatting away. I mean, that, that's always fun because it, you know, just keeps the conversation moving or sometimes it <laughs> completely derails what I was talking about, but you know what? That's the fun of doing a live show. It's so much fun. Um, I guess on Tuesday we'll be back, uh, with the gaming stream. Probably going to be another 7 p.m. or so uh, stream on on Tuesdays. Wednesdays, of course, is the news of the week, and we'll uh, we'll we'll just we'll make sure the times are you know. Hey, thank you, Merrill Digital. Thank you so much, uh, and thank you, Eagle Ford. Of course, thank you for watching. Can't put out lithium fires with water, and extinguishers don't work that well. If it flares up, drown it in sand. I don't have any sand in Central Texas. Uh, we have to import it from Spain. I don't know. Sorry. We're being trolly again. Uh, but yeah. Um, yeah. Phones. I got to figure that out. That was my favorite cell phone back then, by the way. Little flip phone. Dude, I miss the flip phones. But anyway. Throw it out then. Yes. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you on Tuesday, hopefully around 7 p.m. And uh, y'all have a great night. I'd really like to hear what you think, so please leave your comments below on what we talked about. And of course, consider hitting that subscribe button and give it a like if you enjoyed it. It really does help. And as always, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.